amazing story about that. That was actually the, I would say, the work that got um, Color Space, the company that we work for, on the map. www.colorspace.co.za. That is a stock photo platform where we sell images of black people. You're welcome to come and submit. You're also welcome to come and buy images on there. So if you're a brand looking for authentic images of black people, definitely come on there. We were on billboards around Khao Train in Joburg, in Cape Town, Durban. It was just amazing. It was super difficult, actually, during COVID. Um, but out of COVID, good things came out, actually, mm. to be honest. I encourage people to use their cell phones because what we have in our hands is the, one of the best devices ever. I'm trying to make sure the play creatives get paid in the next 10 years. Crazy story. There was a time a year, in fact, where I just wasn't accepting any rates other than the rates that I actually deserved. And I was starving, to be honest. Yeah. But I knew what I needed to do because what I wanted was that. Like I wanted that one thing. Trust me when I say this, the business of photography pays. Most of the images when you go online, you write family. You tell me what you're going to find. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful woman, you tell me what you're going to find. Please do that exercise if you're listening to this. And then you probably understand exactly why we do color space because we're super underrepresented. If you go for a low rate, that client is most likely, number one, going to book you at that rate for many years. Mm. And I say this because I've experienced it. And uh, number two, they're going to refer you at that rate. It's time for our power hustler. He's in studio. Renowned photographer, Cyril Zuma. But I think he does much more than that. The power hustle. Morning, Cyril. Good morning, how are you? Good and you? Very good. How do you say your name, actually, like in full? Tseho Hacho. Tseho Hacho. 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 Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Must be weird though for you, right? It is just a little, but I, I, I like um, getting people's names right because uh, oh, you know, a business mentor of mine recently corrected me. Uh, uh, Vanessa, I used to call her V, and she's uh-huh. like, especially amongst black people, we need to pronounce our names properly because yes. it, it has meaning. I totally agree. Totally yeah. agree with her. But Cyril Zuma? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> No, I mean, we're all thinking of Cyril Zuma. I mean, <laughs> awkward. Who are you getting today? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, you, you've got the full package today. Okay. I don't know if that's a good thing or wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you didn't necessarily start in photography, right? No, I didn't at all. Actually, I started out as a personal trainer. Um, so I'm a qualified personal trainer okay. through Virgin Active. And then I went into IT, went into marketing, went into sales. Um, we did cloud. Um, yeah, that's where I started out and then now I'm in this creative field. So where did the photography love come from then? To be honest, I was at an agency just down the road from here okay. um, as an account manager handling mm-hmm. one of the biggest accounts you know, in, in, in male grooming in South Africa. And I realized that we're lacking stock photography. And I was the one going on Google searching black woman smiling take that or black man smiling right click that and then take it and put it on a post and i was posting that unfortunately and then i realized actually that's wrong because what what we were doing was um illegal yeah Yeah, it was illegal what we were doing so i realized there is a market and then i realized it's actually quite huge in the u.s um, and everywhere else rather and except africa and then i realized shucks I could actually make some money here. And then I started making more money than I was uh, where I was working. That's when I realized, let me go. Wow. But I mean, it must have been quite the process to get to where you are now. It has been a beautiful journey. I'm not going to lie. It has been one of the most beautiful journeys. I, I, when I look at my career, I've done so many things. Mm-hmm. But photography is one that I've stuck the longest, more than 10 years in it. And I've, I mean, I was doing this while I was doing IT, while I was also in cloud, while I was also doing marketing. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's always humbling to hear friends of mine, like the one sitting next to me now, always like, I remember you doing that thing. It's so good to he- to see that you're actually successful at what you do. So it has mm-hmm. been quite an amazing journey. But I have to thank the people around me and the people in you know, the community that I, I'm in. I have such a beautiful community. South Africa has truly amazing photographers, creatives. It's such a beautiful community if you really stick to it. Do you find that within that community there might be some kind of uh, competition? Of course. I think that's good. I like that. Okay. Most of the most of the most of the guys that are you know are in the industry with we talk about we're like yo guys did you did you get that brief i'm like i also got it or did you yeah, i also got it and then we're competing whether it's price whether it's the work whatever it may be we're always competing but in a very very healthy way mm-hmm. um you know i have two podcasts that i run right now and one of them is called bureau conversations where i invite creatives and we talk about such things so for me the comp- i see the competition but it's rather healthy competition how have you seen yourself grow in the 10 years 
that you've been a photographer? Sure. What an interesting question. I've grown so much. I think my skills have just, yeah, I messed to so much. I mean, I'm doing podcasting, so I've got another podcast, which is called Spaza Talk. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got a competition right now or challenge right now running on Twitter called the 21 Day Photo Challenge. So I would say definitely I've grown quite a lot, but I think now I'm becoming a, an old head, you know. <laughs> the young, the youngins are doing quite a, quite a lot out there. But I mean, you're still doing quite a lot yourself. I would assume so, yeah. As a photographer as well. I am. What, would, yeah. what would you say is your niche? What, what, what do you, as Cyril Zuma, enjoy taking pictures of or who? I enjoy taking photos of people's faces uh-huh. and just seeing that expression on people's faces, especially if they're looking at the camera. I love the awkwardness of you not knowing what to do when you're looking at the camera and me getting that expression and emotion out of you. Uh, and not in an awkward way, but we can always direct one another. And I, I enjoy directing people. So portrait photography is my ultimate favorite. Uh-huh. But I do, however, wish, you know, when I started out, I actually st- probably tried all 12 or, or more 12 or more categories just so I can actually taste a little bit of what I, uh, I might like. And I suppose, you know, with like you say, you know, trying out the different parts of photography, that is quite important. But you stick to portrait photography to what you like. Yeah. But you haven't necessarily just, you've worked for various companies as well. I mean, I saw your list. It's super long. <laughs> and one of them is Flight Center. Yes. In fact, amazing story about that that was actually the i would say the work that got um color space the company that we work for on the map that was the first time we did stock photography where we went to cape town we were flown to cape town by a flight center mm-hmm. a team of us and we had to create stock photography and we had to create photos that we had to take photos of black people doing amazing things and that was to me, that was just like, wow. And so this is why mm. Color Space also exists. That was like one of the things that inspired me to get Color Space even going, which is a stock photo platform of black people. So yeah, that gig was amazing. I was, we were on billboards around Khao Train in Joburg, in Cape Town, Durban. It was just amazing. And how does it feel when you get to see your work and you're like, hey, that's <laughs> my picture there. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, if, if I'm alone... Um, most likely I'll cry, um, <laughs> but if I'm with people, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely, um, you know, shed just a huge moment. I think I always look back at where I come from. You know, I, I used to play with like those yellow coated cameras. My mother used to buy me those, a lot of them. And I used to look back maybe, and think maybe I was actually destined to be a photographer. <laughs> so I, I'm, I, I beam with happiness when I see my work out there. Yeah. I can just imagine it. You know, imagine driving past somewhere and you're like, hey. (laughs) (laughs) I did that. I did that. (laughs) It looks so good. But, you know, there must have been challenges in your 10 years. Um, And when we count 10 years, in between the 10 years, we had the nasty virus, COVID. Right? We had that horrible pandemic. The challenges must have been quite difficult as a photographer to start off, um, you know, obviously buying your cameras, you know, buying what you would need, but then going into... A, a, a pandemic such as COVID where everything came to a standstill? It was super difficult actually during COVID. Um, but out of COVID, good things came out actually, mm. to be honest. So there definitely were challenges before that. Um, you know, number one, trying to get clients. I think that's the main thing. Get your get your name out there is quite difficult. And luckily for me, you know, um, when I started out, we were one of the few people in South Africa in Joburg rather doing portrait photography amongst the likes of Cedric and Austin and we're so we all in the streets and we got known quite quickly then. Mm-hmm. But the challenges still remained. But when it came to COVID, for me it was actually not such a challenge. It was a revelation. Um, we st- that's when we started the twenty one day photo challenge which is currently running right now on Twitter. Um we decided, Shucks, as creatives, there's no way we're going to be stuck indoors. And as we always out there. We're always taking photos. We're always doing something, taking some videos. So during COVID, we literally decided to start a challenge. And then we had an amazing time for 21 days because we all thought we were going to be locked down for 21 mm-hmm. days until it became 42 days. <laughs> but yeah, we ended up having a challenge. So for me, it wasn't... Um, it wasn't COVID wasn't such a big thing, but it okay. was rather actually um, a good thing for me personally. And how's the challenge going? Amazing. Amazing. Wow. Um, we were looking at the stats just the other day. I mean, the numbers are just insane. So on, on the podcast that we have, which reports on, on social and on Twitter stuff, on Twitter stats and what's trending on Twitter, we're always reporting on other hashtags. And finally, we're looking at our own stats and the hashtag that we created mm. and we're seeing numbers and we're just 
unbelievably happy. The challenge is going really well. The whole, most of South Africa is actually coming onto the challenge today is travel and uh, travel and outdoors. So you basically all you're gonna do is go onto Twitter, submit a photo that's got to do with travel and tourism. And this is day six, by the way, so we've got more oh, days to come. Um, and use the hashtag 21 Day Photo Challenge SA and you'll be part of the challenge. And if you click on that hashtag, you'll be able to see all the work people have been posting since Monday. And just, it's amazing work. It's absolutely beautiful work. I cannot believe that I have the honor of being able to do this. And I, I'm guessing then it's not just um, about the camera, the actual camera. You can even use your phone. Oh, yes. Challenge. Oh, yes. In fact... You know, I encourage people to use their cell phones because what we have in our hands is the, one of the best devices ever. Most of us have very, very smartphones. We just don't know how to use it. Mm. And if you don't know how to use it, hit me up on info at CyrilZuma.co.za and I will teach you how to use your phone to its full maximum. But we definitely welcome everybody that uses a smartphone. We realize that smartphone photography is probably much bigger than camera photography. And so therefore, there's lots of human beings that capture such amazing photo, photos with their phones, but they don't know what to do with it. Well, here's a challenge to showcase your skills. But doesn't then the smartphone threaten your work as a photographer with a camera? Personally, for me, it can never threaten me. Okay. Like right now, I have a cell phone video recording me, but I have two other cameras. And it's just the quality is different. Like the higher, the higher you go with cameras, it just gets way more different. A phone mm -hmm. can capture up to a certain a level. It can't, it can't really produce a billboard image. The, might, the more you stretch it, it just gets... Pixelated, pixelated and pixelated yeah. but with a camera it's the world is endless and i mean for you to have gotten to this point where you are taking photos of celebrities you know you've got great big companies that you're taking photos of as well or for how does it feel you know how, how <laughs> for you to look back and you say i can't believe i've gotten this far i'm taking a deep breath because you're asking me such an important question <laughs> um we hardly ever look back and say like how do I actually feel about this? Um, I'm blessed. I truly am blessed. I grew up in KZN and Bentley. Um, I never knew I'd be doing this. Mm. Um, I would SABC, the radio, what I'm doing right now, we're just speaking now with Lebo. Like, this is, you know, this is unbelievable to be on radio, something you grew up listening to. It's like Lily's daughter, we used to pick up the radio and listen to stories and listen to people talking and you never thought you'd be doing it. You'd never thought you'd have your work on a billboard. Not so long ago, I was on a billboard in Sanson just outside the car train station with my own face there. And mm. that was even just surreal. Like till this day, I keep all those images. I save them so far away because that's how precious it is to me. I can't, yeah, I can't even describe it to be honest. What do the next 10 years look like for you? Hmm. Should we make it five? <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like, okay, well, let's do both. In, in, in five years, for me, definitely um, a, a growing color space. Mm -hmm. Not even growing color space, actually. Um, I think growing, we are growing right now. I want to find the right word. Thriving at color space in the next five years. That's mm -hmm. where I see myself. And then in the next 10 years, mm, shucks. Am I, I'm, I'm going to be old. I'm going to be like 40-something. <laughs> <laughs> so I am definitely see myself being like, you know, one of those guys that teaches youngsters about photography and carry on the, the legacy of photography in South Africa. I, I hectically um, believe that, you know, we have a huge underrepresentation of black people in so many ways in terms of photography. We need to showcase that. And that's literally my mission at Color Space, mm. to make sure that we're showcasing images of black people that are authentic, and then number two, making sure that all the creators that are on there get some money because we all need to get paid for our creativity. And creativity is one of the most underlooked things. But guess what? When you switch on a radio, when you switch on a TV, when you look at a magazine, when you switch on your phone, it's creativity mm -hmm. happening all around you. In fact, somebody created this mic stand. Everybody, mm -hmm. Somebody created this desk. Everything is about creativity. So I'm trying to make sure the play creatives get paid in the next 10 years. And I'm glad you mentioned that, right? Because there's always this fight for black people or black creatives to get what they're worth. Oh, yeah. I mean, when are we going to stop doing that? Do you <laughs> think it will ever come to an end? I don't think it will ever come to an end. And part of the reason I would say, mm -hmm. and I urge creatives to do this for themselves, we need to take ourselves very seriously. Mm -hmm. And by seriously, I mean, you know, you don't have to be stuck up, but you need to understand what it takes to where you're trying to get to. 
Look mm. at the people that are up there. What are they doing? And take yourself seriously so that the next person takes you seriously. I mean, crazy story. There was a time a year, in fact, where I just wasn't accepting any rates other than the rates that I actually deserved. And I was starving, to be honest. Yeah. But I knew what I needed to do because what I wanted was that. Like, I wanted that one thing. And I literally stayed starving for a year. People thought I wasn't getting booked. I wasn't, nothing was happening. I was fine with that. But I understood that I wasn't going to take that because it wasn't worth it. Mm. And luckily for me, I'm here. I'm standing here. I'm on Power FM with you. I mean, what a blessing. I mean, it's amazing. It's nine o'clock. Uh, Cyril Zuma is a renowned photographer. We'll soon be calling him a legendary photographer. <laughs> 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 I'd like for us to go to news and then we'll wrap up our conversation with Cyril Zuma. The Power Hustle. Seven minutes after nine o'clock, fourth and final hour of Power Weekend Breakfast. If you've just joined us, where have you been? We've been in conversation with our Power Hustler this morning, Cyril Zuma. Yes, you heard correctly. <laughs> Cyril <laughs> Zuma. It's our president and former president in one. <laughs> But you know, you mentioned something, Cyril, ne? Um, when we just before the news, where you spoke about your rates and knowing your worth. With the younger um, generation, as they come into photography, those that have you know studied photography, those that enjoy doing it, what would you say to them about knowing their worth, even though they may be young, but they need to know that they are worth a particular amount, especially because of one's time, right? For sure, yeah. I, I would ask a question the first before anything else, actually, before I talk to them, I would ask them, where do you see yourself in 10 years or mm-hmm. five years with this photography thing? And if you tell me that you will still want to be in the industry in that year, then I'm definitely going to tell you about your rates and tell you that you need to understand one thing. If you go for a low rate, that client is most likely, number one, going to book you at that rate for many years. Mm. And I say this because I've experienced it. And number two, they're going to refer you at that rate. Number three, you're probably just going to stay at that level most of the time about your rate. So you need to know your worth. And like, if you really love this thing and you know you're good at this thing and you know you take your time to learn this thing and put in the effort, you will not let, let yourself short. So don't let yourself short if you're a young person. Do not accept the gig just because you need the money. Understand what it is that you are trying to do at the end. Um, you know, one of the stories I always tell people and it's very close to me, but it's quite sad. You know, I was at, at a time when people thought I was at my peak, but mm-hmm. I wasn't accepting gigs at all because it was at a lower rate than I had actually planned for myself. I was realizing I'm at the same rate. I'm charging 950 Rand. And now it's been three years, four years charging the same thing. There's no sure. way I can carry into And my clients like booking me at that price because what happens is I you book me for that price, guess what's going to happen? You're going to tell her for about mm. that price because she's your friend. And when she comes to me, she's not going to be like, yeah, no, I'll take the full rate. She's going to want to take the, the, the rate that you got. Mm. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to put in amazing work still. But... And then people just know me for good work and low rate. And trust me, it happens. I've seen photographers, unfortunately, um, come into the industry and not last more than five years just because, you know, whether they were chasing something sure. else other than the real business of photography. Trust me when I say this, the business of photography pays. You can become whatever you want, a millionaire. You can have a helicopter. Look at the people around you that are in photography that are doing it. Look at there's so there's so many examples if you really are in the industry to see people that are successful in the industry even just in South Africa alone mm. that are successful in it to let you know that this is a career and you should take it very seriously take your career very seriously totally love that what are the what's what what can people catch you or where can people catch you is, is it even possible are you like an artist <laughs> where, where i'm like oh you know what i'm going to see cyril zuma doing photography is that even possible <laughs> i think i need a good guide right now <laughs> uh, <laughs> but i'm such um you know there's few places for to catch me uh, my name is pretty easy to remember luckily cannot forget it <laughs> <laughs> so all social media platforms all of them you can think of at cyril zuma you'll find me on there but the best place you can catch me, to be honest, is on Twitter mm-hmm. under using the hashtag 21 Day Photo Challenge SA. And then the second one, which I would probably say is if you go actually go to www.colorspace.co.za, that is a stock photo platform where we sell images of black people. You're welcome to come and submit. You're also welcome to come and buy images on there. So if you're a brand looking for authentic images of black people, definitely come on there. Before I let you go, is there a specific reason why you are focusing on black people? Yes, and I for those listening, I, I hope that you know people don't take it in a political way, but it has to do with race. Mm. 
um, when we're being honest. Um, you know, for when we date back time, black people have not been represented in images in any way possible. Even now, we're still not being well represented. Just the other day, I was looking at a brand's, I won't say their name, but I was looking at the brand picture, and it was a polished picture of black people. Even though, yes, those realities do exist, but how often do you see the real reality of, you know, what's happening at Kasi? And not in a, mm. not, not in a negative mm. manner, right? Still seeing kids having fun, families, because there are good families that exist also at Kasi. So we've been hugely underrepresented in so many ways. We don't have a voice. And I know some people might think, oh, there's enough images of black people, but we're not re well represented in an authentic manner. Most of the images, when you go online, you write family. You tell me what you're going to find. Yeah, yeah. beautiful woman you tell me what you're gonna find please do that exercise if you're listening to this and then you probably understand exactly why we do color space because we're super underrepresented sure Cyril thank you thank you so beautiful truly love this interview can we continue <laughs> 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 it has been amazing. It's been here. a lovely time. Thank you so much. Cyril Zuma, renowned photographer. I'm telling you, very soon we'll be calling him legendary. <laughs> I don't even think it will take you 10 years. Oh, how many more years do Maybe you Maybe five. Five more years. Yeah, then we're calling you a legendary photographer. I, I can't wait. And I know, I think you guys have actually had a legendary photographer in studio here. I just can't remember who, but Simpiwe. Uh, Sim, he's a legendary photographer. So check him out. One yeah. of the best photographers ever. Like. Okay. Yeah, high up there. and if you don't, if you haven't had him please have him that that's the person one of the people i look up to okay that yeah. taught you your skill or that just it's just somebody that you know has looks like from what i've seen and read about he's mm -hmm. been in the craft for years like he was documenting during apartheid and before apartheid and now he's still documenting even now he's an older person with a camera and he's got skills like he's got skills all right. like he can teach me a lot of things all right Daniko, that's our next guest <laughs> thank you so much cyril i appreciate your time thank you guys for having me here i really really appreciate it i hope i'll be back soon what a pleasure guys cyril has got cam two cameras <laughs> so we are ready always photogenic right <laughs> cyril's my renowned photographer is our power hustler this morning. Such a great conversation. Do check him out on X. The hashtag is 21 day photo, photo, challenge, photo SA. challenge SA.